I am joined by one of my favorite amateur prospects at the moment, Mr. Austin Green. What's up, man? How are you? Going on. I'm doing all right. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I appreciate the time. So first things first, I do have to bring up The Walking Dead. You appeared in an episode. How was that? That was that was pretty dope, actually. It was actually their studios film, or their, where they filmed, it was like maybe 15, 20 minutes from where I'm originally from. So it's like right by the house. Huh. How long was that process? That took probably maybe an hour to an hour and a half, almost two. See yourself doing some more acting in the near future? Yeah. That's why, like, once I'm kind of finished doing my MMA, I was going to start going in and doing more acting and stuff like that. Well, very cool. Very cool, obviously. So in addition to fighting and acting, you're a trainer. You also play football. I feel like you kind of do uh, everything there, man. <laughs> do you do everything? That's what somebody else told me the other, uh, the other day. They was like, man, you do, you do everything. I was like, I just like to try my hand in other things. I don't like to be stuck doing one thing. I want to move around and, and dwell and see, see how I like other stuff as well. Well, I think that's obviously a great approach to life because you kind of get to experience everything, you know? Yeah, exactly having that football uh, background I feel like that would help obviously with strength with power you know agility cardio all that stuff but have you found that that's really kind of helped you in the cage so far uh when I first started my football training kind of helped me it helped it was an easier transition into fighting because like when I'm training with some of my coaches and stuff they'll break it down into football terms so I can understand it a lot better. You talk about that transition from, you know, football to mixed martial arts. How did you kind of get started in MMA uh, initially? So I was playing arena, arena ball, and I had a friend who he had, he had messaged me one day. He was like, bro, have you ever thought about trying MMA? And I was like, I mean, yeah, I've thought about it. I just didn't know any gyms or where to go to train. And then he pointed me to a gym that's literally right behind my house at this other gym and they started me started me with some jujitsu classes kickboxing for a few months to see how I transitioned and then we started working towards getting the first fight so how was learning uh bjj because i say this all the time but i also took a few months of a uh, brazilian uh, brazilian jujitsu it was incredibly difficult for me but do you, do you kind of have any funny stories for me about your first bjj class uh my first class it wasn't too too bad Cause there, we like we don't have we didn't have that many heavyweights training so it was a lot of the smaller guys which was kind of weird because like when i first started i was just using just my strength and power and was just and i'd still get tapped out and i never understood how they would always manage to get me in those positions and then once i started learning more and learning the techniques and stuff like that i started to realize like how they were. yeah i got get cast out in like the first 30 seconds and then they just they'd wear me out and I, it was, oh. it was embarrassing. It, it, you know what, man? It is super difficult. I remember my first BJJ class. Literally, and I, I had obviously been covering you know, mixed martial arts here in St. Louis for quite some time, but I, I really kind of wanted to try BJJ for self-defense and all that. And my first class, I got put in an arm bar and then a knee bar. It was, it was awful. And I have no athletic background, so I couldn't use my strength or power. It was literally horrible, but I did enjoy it for some odd reason. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun. I enjoy it, for sure. Yeah. So, so striking, you know, all that technique, BJJ, grappling, has that been, you know, fairly easy for you? Like, how has that process been? Uh, yeah. Like the technique, it's it kind of like I feel like it comes naturally. So once they teach me something, I'll practice it and I'll drill it, and then, like, I gotta, cause my like I got, I'll sometimes I'll forget really quick, so I have to go back and refresh and do stuff like that. But the transition, I mean, everything's pretty. It's pretty, it's pretty simple to kind of concept. Yeah, yeah. It's just the repetitions and the practice and to get that muscle memory. So when you're in a fight, you don't think about it. It just naturally happens. Right, right. Well, obviously, watching your fights, you've, you, you've done a tremendous job in, in the cage so far. You're 3-0. and Your fights have ended, you know, via finish. It's really evident. I mean, obviously, your stand-up, you have a crap ton of power, and that seems to be natural. And obviously, footwork, head movement, that's all stuff that you've really gotten better at for sure. Your wrestling defense, I remember I watched your debut just yesterday, and uh, it was impressive. Like, the guy was trying to take you down, get you against the cage, and you did a phenomenal job staying away and then eventually knocking him out later in that round. Thank you. But that's, that's the goal. Yeah, yeah, of course. So what, what are the goals for 2019, 2020? When is the next time we're going to see you in the cage, hopefully? 
I'm looking for a June 29th fight, but if that doesn't come around, then I'll for sure be fighting again in August. Right. And then I'm trying to finish out the rest. I want to have three more fights to finish this year out. And hopefully I'll probably after this year, I'll speak to my coaches around December time frame and see when a, a possible pro debut can be. Perfect, perfect. Well, I'm super stoked for that. I'm sure you're going to be uh, tearing it up uh, in the pro ranks. Walk me through a typical uh, day for you. Obviously, you know, in a fight camp, when you're not in fight camp, I'm sure it kind of is different. But walk me through a typical training day. Okay, so I wake up, take my dog out, maybe go for, to me and her, go for a little walk. And then I usually go to the gym, work out, do a couple of lifts. And then by that time, it's uh, it's usually that time to start class, and then we'll go either do you see the kickboxing or jujitsu, and then or we like with jujitsu we'll mix it up and MMA training, so we'll practice takedowns, play cage defense, stuff like that. And after that, that's when I go home, eat. Now I've just started actually swimming, so now I usually go for like a swim after class or something like that, or after I train, and then that's been helping out a lot with my cardio and stuff like that. Yeah, I absolutely hate swimming. I'm not going to lie to you, man. <laughs> it's fun. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I'll say, hey, as long as you love it, that's what it's all about. Now, do you have any fighters uh, that you kind of look up to, uh, even fighters who you just kind of, you know, enjoy watching? Uh, well, the fighter that actually got me really enjoying it, or like actually started watching MMA as a kid with Frank Page Jacks. Hmm. That's yeah. where I get the idea for the chain. and Yeah. Because... All-time favorite fighter, Rampage Jackson. I actually had a chance to uh, interview Rampage Jackson for, for my second book, which was several years ago. It was like five or six years ago. Super nice guy, but he's an absolute legend. I always love watching him fight. But since he's retired, I, I would say the fighter I enjoy watching now is probably Stylebender. Oh, yeah. Did you, did you watch his last fight against Gastelum? Yeah. Oh, that was a crazy was war. war. I was I was on the edge of my seat the whole fight. You realize that if there was like 20, 30 more seconds, I didn't say I would have 100% got the finish. I mean, Gassum was running on empty. For sure, for sure. And Gassum's got a lot of heart, too. You know what, Gassum, I, I became a fan of his after he beat uh, Uriah Hall in the Ultimate Fighter House. Because as much as I like Uriah Hall, you know, he, he, there was so much praise. But at the end of the day, everyone is able to be beaten. And he, was, he stuck to his game plan. He wrestled him down. And he's just been destroying guys left and right. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So for future fans of yours, Austin, for, you know, fans who are going to be watching you here in the near future, what do you want them to know about you? What should they expect to see from you while you're in that cage? Well, I guess you could say it's going to be some exciting fights. I don't like – I don't those long, drawn-out, boring-style fights. I mean, they help – a win is a win, but I like to get to finish. You know, heavyweights, we don't like to go three, five rooms. The cardio is just – it's there, but then it's, it doesn't feel good carrying around extra weight. So I'm always looking for the finish, whether that be a knockout, submission, TKO. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the fans, and you want people to come see you fight, and that's how you market yourself, and that's how you get those real big money fights, really. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, you know what? Your first three fights, I think you're going to have a crap ton of fans here in the new future. You are, once again, knocking guys out very quickly. All of your fights have been very exciting. Now, when you're, you know, obviously not training, that takes up a lot of time. But when you're not training, when you're not stepping in a cage, when you're not acting or anything like that, what do you like to do in your free time? Uh, I'm a real, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm kind of addicted to working out. I'm always in the gym lifting, just trying to get stronger, faster. I mean, that's just been a, an addiction for me since, since high school is lifting. And then when I'm, not, when I'm not lifting, I'm usually at the house playing video games watching movies, stuff like that. Just kind of relaxing, chilling. Yeah. You have any favorite uh, video games? Uh, don't necessarily have a favorite game. I have a lot of games that, like, my actually my all-time favorite would probably be Gears of War and Halo. Those would be, like, my two. Yeah. Do you, do you ever play the uh, UFC video game? Yeah. I played – I used to play those – the old ones a lot. The newer ones, I don't play those as much as I used to. Yeah. Well, you know what? You and I are going to have to play sometime. The, the, I mean, obviously, the, the newest UFC game I am absolutely horrible at 
I still have not been able to uh, play that one. But like the old Strike Force game, that old Strike Force game, I will. I think I have an undefeated record of like a hundred and zero in that game. <laughs> when I played, uh, whenever I used to play the UFC games, I would always like, I would always hold a record because like I would always use Rampage, and I never lost a Rampage. <laughs> So every time I play somebody, that'd be the first person I get, and I, they, they can never get past you. Even when you fought against John Jones, you still won? Yeah. Dang. All right, well, never mind. I don't think I'm going to challenge you anymore because I'm pretty sure Quinn Jackson's already taken, right? Yeah, that's my, that's my dog. All right, fine, I got you. I got you. Well, Austin, before your next fight, I'm sure we're going to be doing another interview. The floor is yours. Anyone you'd like to thank, how can people find you on Instagram and any other platform? Uh, I just want to thank all my coaches, my trainers, everybody that's that's been that's really been holding it down with me since I first started. You know, a lot of people they when I when I told them I was thinking about doing MMA, they always they told me I was crazy. Like they were like, oh man, you no, know, it's a it's a crazy man sport. You get in there, let people hit on you and fight. And I was always told, I was like, well, I mean, you only get hit if you can't. Like it's it's all about you. Like it's not about if they can't touch you, then you're good. You know what I'm saying? So I've always been like real, like, yeah, you're going to get hurt. It's not going to feel good, but I'm in soft part of the game. And that's what I enjoy doing. So I want to appreciate it. I thank everybody that's stuck with me, supported me and stuff like that. And Instagram, you can follow me at Ironman8100. And you can follow me on Snapchat at Ironman underscore 8100 or on Facebook at Austin Green. I don't have Twitter. So I really, well, I have it, but I don't use it and I don't know how to use it that well.